So in this video, we're going to talk about removing moss from your roof shingles. I love moss just like anybody else, but certainly not on my roof. Uh, roof moss tends to grow on north-facing roofs that receive less direct sunlight and stay damp longer than a south-facing roof. South-facing roofs have the benefit of um, way more sunlight and they tend to be drier and, and it just it doesn't grow as much. Moss needs a moist environment to survive. So there are three contributing culprits that promote the growth of moss. The first is moisture, the second lack of sunlight, and the third is roof debris, not clearing off leaves and, and sticks and stuff from low hanging roofs. Overhanging branches provide shade, right? As well as drop debris on the roofs. And this debris holds in moisture, it gets wet, it holds and acts kind of as a fuel source for the moss. So the question is, can moss damage your shingles? Yes, it can. Um, moss actually can beat up your shingles over time and basically reduce their longevity and performance. As the moss grows, it attaches to the shingles and a lot of times along the lips of the shingles and it lifts those leading edges of the shingles. As the, sh as the shingles lift and curl upward, they're at a more increased risk for tearing off due to high winds. So uh, before we get started, I just want to talk quickly about roof safety because I would be remiss if I didn't tell you that a lot of falls and many serious injuries are countering in construction and working on a roof. So slipping, falling, not properly um, protecting yourself. So never w uh, work on a wet roof unless you're protected. Uh, keep your work area safe from dirt, debris, tools, hoses, ropes. Wear safe footwear and works, works safely when you're on a steep or pitched roof. Anything over six feet, you should be in a safety harness with a rope. And, um, and also take care in setting up your ladder properly. And if you don't know how to do that, we've got articles on Toolbox Buzz and Concord Carpenter to show you how to do that. All right, let's talk about removing the moss. There's a bunch of cleaning products out there that you could just buy and spray and forget. And in fact, I think that's actually a brand name, spray and forget. But the most effective method that I've seen for clearing algae and moss from a roof is a 50-50 solution of chlorine, bleach, and water. So it's a D, it's a D, I call it the DIY uh, roof moss remover. If you're gonna try, if you're the type of person who wanna try this yourself, then try this method. It works pretty good. I use it all the time. Um, it does take some time to work. Roof moss will loosen over time and sometimes you can remove a uh, leaf blower I use a hose just because I want it done right away. Um, okay, so here's how you do it. The first thing we want to do is we want to get ourselves a garden sprayer, pump sprayer, and we want to mix up a 50-50 um, solution and spray it onto the moss shingles. I spray the whole roof, but mostly the moss. Give it 15 minutes, 15 to 20 minutes to sink in and then soak in and then you're gonna rinse it thoroughly with low pressure water, not a pr uh, pressure washer. And you, gotta, you might find you gotta reapply the solution. I reapply twice usually before I hit it with a hose. You wanna make sure you protect landscaping and anything on the runoff, the roof's edge, um, plants, window boxes, things like that. Never use a pressure washer because it can damage the asphalt roof and cause the granules, premature loss of granules. It also can get water under the shingles and curl the shingles up. Um, it may, uh, you may need one, more than one treatment after you do this. You may have to go back and do it again because you didn't get it all. Uh, but it's a really good way to do it. As far as eradicating roof moss or preventing it, there's some proactive things that you can do, additional things that you can do to discourage moth growth, moss growth. First of all, trim back branches and allow more sunlight to reach the roof. You gotta eliminate the elements, right? Um, reduce debris accumulation on your roof, whether you blow it off or get up there and clean it off. And, and don't allow your gutters uh, upper gutters to drain onto lower roofs because that just gets everything wet and puts a lot of debris on it. And lastly, if you want to do this, you can apply a zinc or copper strips under your ridge caps of your shingles. And as the water, rainwater hits those strips, they leach enough chemicals that actually kill the moss. And if you don't believe me, just look at any house that has moss growth and look at the chimney. You'll see that underneath the chimney is clean and that's because the lead flashing under that chimney is leaching and killing the moss below it. So when you apply a lead or a zinc strip along the uh, roof's edge, the ridge cap, the same, uh, the same principle applies. You could do it a third or a half of the way up and then do the ridge cap if you wanted really good coverage. Additionally, when you re-roof, you can purchase algae resistant shingles. 
These shingles look like normal shingles, but they have copper granules embedded in the asphalt shingle along with the normal granules that are normally there. The copper granules are embedded within the entire sheet, the entire shingle, so that when you do the whole roof, you get a uniform cleaning and it, it, the end result is a uniform color and look over time. The active ingredient in a lot of these algae resistant shingles is titanium dioxide and that's the um, ingredient they use to keep the algae down. I'm not 100% sure how long that lasts or how long they guarantee that roof for but it's a great idea and it doesn't really increase the price much. I'm Rob Robillard and we'll see you next time at Concord Carpenter.